This is WCM's Park Update, a weekly show covering the outdoor hospitality industry hosted by Ben Quiggle and Mike Gast. During each episode, you'll hear from special guests and campground experts on topics that will help your park flourish. WCM's Park Update is a production of Woodall's Campground Magazine. Hi, I'm Ben Quiggle, editor of Woodall's Campground Magazine, and this is another episode of WCM's Park Update. And of it, it, the show is sponsored, whatever. We're going to restart that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I run over. One second. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Hi, I'm Ben Quiggle, editor of Woodall's Camgron Magazine, and this is another episode of WCM's Park Update, sponsored by Midwest Electric Products. And of course, my esteemed colleague is here, Mike Gast, CEO and president of the Emiola Group, and based in sunny, beautiful Nebraska. And then our yeah, <laughs> and then our guest today is Scott Nielsen who is the owner of the newly opened Yogi Bears Jellystone Park Camp Resort Zion in Hurricane Utah which I guess Scott I guess you know I'm not from Utah I don't I uh, I've been to Utah but just kind of give us a little geography as to where this new <laughs> park is I guess yeah, so we're uh, 26 miles just um, west of Zion National Park. So as you're sitting okay. in the resort, looking up, you can see that vast, just beautiful, majestic Zion National Park. Yeah, and this is pretty exciting. I mean, obviously, it's got to be pretty exciting for you because you've been working on developing this location for a couple of years now, I believe. But it's got to be pretty exciting for Jellystone Park, too, because I think this is the furthest west location they have right or do they have one in california well they do have one in lodi california okay. but we we are one of the the newest into the franchise and uh the first in utah for sure yeah so scott, so, scott what were you doing before the before the campground bug hit you yeah you know i was actually in the rv business um i i owned a friend well wasn't a franchise but a chain of rv dealerships nielsen rv and when we sold the camping world, Marcus Lemonis, we decided, hey, instead of selling the RV, we're going to go sell the fun now. We're going to do it. We're going to sell the camping behind that. So, so what is your? Like you, go, ahead, go ahead. So, what is your experience? You know, working on the dealership side. I guess how did that prepare you for for making this big step with Jellystone? I guess. Uh, you know, when you sell selling RVs, you know exactly what the turning radiuses are, what the, you know, the opposing yeah. slide outs, the connections, the amperage. The, so it really helped us develop um, these campsites to accommodate big rigs. So I developed every campsite to accommodate a Prevost bus, really, essentially. Wow. Yeah. It, it seems like you've, you've taken this a lot farther than we see a lot of new construction go. I mean, th this thing is looks like it's been there for longer than it has. Uh, you obviously decided you weren't going to get, you weren't going to open up in, you know, a, a, a week phase one and a, then a two years later, a phase two or three, <laughs> phase three. It looks really cool. I mean, it looks yeah. uh, complete. It doesn't, doesn't look like there's much missing there. Was that intentional that you, you wanted to have a, a you didn't want to start off with the phase one type operation? Exactly. We wanted to get all of our attractions, all the amenities in uh, up front. Um, we do have a phase two. It, it actually was a phase two and three, and we incorporated it all into phase two. And th that that is about 230 sites, additional sites. Those will come online here in just a couple months. We're not waiting. Uh, yeah, like you said, two, three years uh, before we incorporate those. They're coming online here real soon. So when this is What's all said, the, so when this is all said and done, how many sites total are you going to have? I guess right, right around three hundred and thirty. But okay. our campsites are so big, uh, Ben. They're they're forty five feet wide. By summer, like a hundred and thirty feet long. Yeah. And so, what we what we're going to be able to do is incorporate uh, if we want to add more cabins, two cabins okay. per campsite. So that'll okay. increase to it might go to three sixty or four twenty. You know, over time. Yeah. And it looks like uh, you have a real uh, emphasis on on the fun you mentioned. You've got basketball courts, yoga ball, horseshoe, pickleball, uh, playground, volleyball courts. I mean, you've, you've got a lot of stuff in place already. 
Uh, is that because you're you're kind of out there? Was was the ground just nothing but desert before you arrived? Yeah, you know, the ground was, uh, it was sagebrush desert. Um, we are very, very close to San Hollow State Park, which is beautiful. We're, we're close to um, hundreds of acres um, of uh, sand dunes. So lots of fun and stuff to do. We're just outside of Zion National Park. So there's so many things you can do to beat the heat and get out and have fun. So what's, yeah. the, what's your uh, customer base looking like? Are you after the total transient that's going to be going someplace? Are you trying to grab people for a week or two or, or, or longer? So during the summer, we're after that transient nightly rental. But during the winter time, we, we're in a mild climate to where a lot of folks from like Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Salt Lake City, they come down and, and you know, we're kind of, they joke around, we're called the uh, Palm Springs of Utah. So it's a really nice climate. <laughs> The, the, you know, the senior citizens come down, the snowbirds, and they, they spend the winter. And so there's a lot of different activities we're going to do, like events and uh, ice cream socials and all that kind of cool stuff with entertainment to accommodate the snowbird when they come down to the resort. It is a, a full-time year-round resort. We never close. And a lot of the resorts are busting at the seams here in southern Utah with the snowbirds during the winter time. So that makes your Wi-Fi pretty important. So how did how did you go about getting the best Wi-Fi you could? Yeah, you know, we actually contracted with a company at Jellystone recommended, and that was uh, Access Parks, if you're familiar with them. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, yeah, we got the little spiral finial um, towers up all over in the resort on all 53 acres uh, at super fast Wi-Fi. And they guarantee it, too. They guarantee the speeds. Yeah, I noticed you don't have the little. Uh, I know. I know a lot of their parks that they work with have the little gauge that shows you what their uh, speeds are at the resort. I guess so. I you know what? <laughs> you bring up a good question. I need to get that on there because that is a thing that they they allow us to do is they put yeah. the speed on the website. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. You know, one of the things I really noticed when you know I live in Michigan, so obviously everybody knows we have the Great Lakes. One of the things I really noticed was you have a tremendous water park, but it's out in the desert, I guess. How, what logistically, how was that possible? I guess. I mean, it looks yeah, like a huge yeah, oasis, I guess, in the middle of the desert. Yeah. So you bet there, I mean, there is a challenge because we do go through those uh, famines, if you will, where there's just scarcity of water. Um, yeah. What people don't realize though, is there, there are massive aquifers under the ground. Um, I mean, we have these massive lakes, if you will, under the ground. And if you can, if you pay, you know, to drill the well and pump the water to procure that, you know, that, that resource, then you're okay. And so that's what we were able to do. Um, we, we drilled down about 450 feet in the ground. We, we, uh, punched into the Navajo, uh, sandstone aquifer and we, we pump about hundred gallons a minute. So that's how we filled our man-made lake. Um, we own our own acre feet of water. And then um, they, the, the health department requires culinary water for the water park. So we are on culinary for the water park and the campsites. What is a, I guess, can you explain that? What is a culinary? So the stuff, oh, from yeah, the well, yeah. the stuff from the well, you can't use to cook, I guess. Yeah. I forget, okay. man. I mean, it's different back, back <laughs> east, right? You guys just, the, the water just falls from the heavens. But um, so, God, cul culinary water is, it is groundwater, but it's treated. Um, okay. All and right. so it's, it's uh, drink, it, you can drink it. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, I get, I, you know, I always have to ask because I'm a journalist. Well, Mike yeah. and I are journalists at heart. And when I hear a term I haven't heard before, I'm like, hmm, curious. Because, yeah, we just take everything from the ground here in Michigan and pretty much drink or do whatever we want with it. But yeah. And, and, and good it, journalists know nothing to start with. We, we yeah. are a blank slate. <laughs> yeah. really so we don't know. Uh, well, I, I will tell you this, you can drink the water straight from the well here. It is pure, but it's, it's, there's kind of a government control thing back okay. here in the West. Right. That's what it's all about. So, so speaking, I'm guessing, uh, I'm guessing yeah. the road into your park looks pretty unusual and you've got that great big water park and all those water slides sitting there. It, it must just, as Ben said, looks like an oasis in the middle of, in the middle of a, a barren desert. Yeah, you know, I call that eye candy. So when you're going down the freeway, going down the main road, and you look over and see that, you just can't uh, resist. It's a tractor beam. It sucks you right in. 
Um, it's kind of like the Ray Kroc thing. If you get the kids, you know, you get the parents. So the kids are definitely wanting to come into the park and, and participate in all the attractions that we have to offer. And so, you know, if you nag mom and dad hard enough, you're going to get your way. Right. So that's what we're hoping. You've got, you've got four by four off-roading rides listed on your website too. Is, Is that through a vendor or how does that work? Yep. That, that is third party. And uh, we do that through new book. We have an open API. So basically um, people can reserve and then we just take a little bit, about 15 to 20% off the top. And we're doing a lot of partnerships like that. Uh, right now we're working with um, Zion Utah helicopters where they're going to come in to the park, pick up the folks that want to go, the guests and fly over Zion national park. We have ATV, UTV, Jeep rentals, um, tours, yeah, you, you name it, you can rent it through us, but they are third party groups. We don't actually own the rental. We're going to focus on campgrounds. That's what we're going to focus on. So how did you, so, um, well, I guess let's just start from the beginning. I guess what was the, you know, you mentioned the government, I guess, what was the process of getting this put in? And I think I remember reading some stories in the local news about, you know, you going through that process. I guess, what was that process like to get to this point? Yeah, it, it, you know, Ben, it was three years of just red tape, um, lots yeah. of bureaucratic stuff dealing with the the cities, um, the local utility departments and stuff. But, um, you know, overall, they wanted to help us. It was just a process. And um, working through all of that, we finally got to the point where we had procured everything that we needed to start. And um, from the point of mass excavation, where we started going out and because our site's on like a lava flow. It's it's a major big lava flow. So you're dealing with basalt, you're dealing with that really hard rock. We had to blast all 53 acres in order to just work, to just get started, get it wow. leveled, and then dig in trenches and lay in miles and miles of pipe and sewer and water and power. Um, yeah, it, major challenge. So from from start to finish to, to day one of opening, it was three years. Yeah, and uh, I... You know, what What was some of the biggest, you know, help to you? I imagine did Jellystone Park chip in some and help a little bit, uh, you know, when it came to like helping you get the permits and stuff or what What was beneficial to you throughout that whole process? Je- Jellystone Park has been phenomenal. Um, we did not get any help from them, though, on this on this front. This was something that I, I've owned a development company, building company, uh, along with my RV dealerships for the past 25 years. And so. Yeah. Um, we really felt comfortable going about this and we just, no, we, I, I mean, to call it a fight is probably an understatement. I mean, it, it was a fight to get it done, but we just went through the process that we know and, uh, it took time, but we got her done. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks beautiful. Well, we're, we're going to take a minute. we got to recognize our sponsor Midwest and we will be back with more with Scott. Hi, welcome back to WCM's Park Update, and we are talking with Scott Nielsen, the owner of the brand new Jellystone Park, Zion, Utah. And I mean, it's amazing. I know when I was reading the press release, you mentioned that your kids were involved somewhat in the process. I guess, can you talk a little bit about how they helped you develop the park? To some yeah. Group. So uh, to give you an example, we went, we went all over the country, we went to Larkspur, Colorado. We went to that Jellystone, very, yeah. very nice park. They did a great job. Um, we went uh, golfing and my kids, I have seven kids and my youngest is six years old. My oldest is 17. So I, re- I have a really good beta test going here, you know, with these kids. And yeah. We go, we go golfing and they start getting hot and they're tired and they start complaining. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, what's the, what's wrong with this picture here? And then we went back to uh, Randy Isaacson's uh, park in Caledonia. He was awesome. Spent the whole day with us and our family. And then we went over to Wisconsin uh, to the Kalahari's and we went through and we golfed inside their backlit, uh, like, uh, it was, it was really cool. It was like glow in the dark mini golf. My kids loved it. And so I'm thinking, um, 200 square or 2000 square feet versus 43,560 square feet of, um, space that this, this, uh, mini golf would take up. And my kids are like, dad, this is a no brainer. 
And so we're going to be doing this backlit mini golf in our event center, as opposed to a one, one and a half acre uh, miniature golf. That was all from the kids. Another, I mean, I could go on and on about situations like that, where the kids really enjoy certain things at Jellystone, mm -hmm. like the mining sluice, but going to most Jellystones, they have this small little mining sluice. They don't make it a production. We made our mining sluice a full on production. We made it huge, but now we base our events and activities around that. And I'm telling you, since we open, we will have 60, 70 people out there mining with this sluice material. And that was all because of my kids. It's just, that's what they like. That's what they enjoy. And so based on that, that's how we designed the park. Multi-million yeah, dollar you decisions. You mentioned, Scott, you've got a, uh, a man-made lake, uh, reservoir lake at, at the at the park. That includes an inflatable uh, obstacle course. Uh, obviously, there's people in that lake swimming. What challenges does that bring along to the park ownership? Uh, well, you know, we had to get a couple lifeguards that were deep water certified, um, you know, having the, the process of having it installed, I think it was CRS or CSR. So anyway, CRS, the, yeah. they came out, yep. yeah, they came out and did the install. They were phenomenal to work with. Um, very seamless process worked out great. Um, you know, uh, we lined the entire, uh, lake with, uh, bent night with clay instead of, uh, like an inner tube type liner. Um, you know, that makes it friendlier in the environment and so forth that holds the water in, but uh, dealing with the aeration and injection of enzymes to keep it clean and pure, you know, those are, that's a process. Um, but it's really not, not too difficult, not as difficult as I thought it was going to be. Um, probably our biggest obstacle is just keeping qualified lifeguards um, there all the time. And, you know, when, when school comes back in play, we're trying to deal with, we got to hire people that are in college or out of high school to lifeguard. So, cause our, our, our weather will stay good till about October. We're a year round park and we're going to keep the water park open through October. It's hot here and in that, October. And that includes yeah. a beach for people to, to relax on too. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. that's gotta be the only beach around, around the country, I'm guessing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess, you know, what are, you know, what are some of the things, um, you know, obviously you have your different phases, I guess, is this one park, uh, you know, are you thinking of owning multiple parks down the road or, or are you just going to stick with this one? So the, the plan with uh, Jellystone Zion was it was one park of many and the, the parent company is Glampers Inn. And so my, my motivation is to build that brand. Um, I noticed that the big dogs, you know, like Sun Outdoors and Equity Lifestyles and so forth, they just don't have a lot of infrastructure or parks back in the Midwest to West Coast. Um, through my development company and through my experience in the RV business, we thought, hey, there, there is plenty of room for this space. And so we would continue to develop and add to the uh, Glampers Inn brand. Um, so, yeah, I think it's one of many parks, definitely. Uh, would, you know, are you, are you considering like all Jellystone at this point or, or is it going to, some of them going to be different brands or, you know, even maybe a KOA or something? I think, uh, I think if we go with a franchise, it'll definitely be with Jellystone. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't, I don't know that I'd venture out in the, in KOA. I, I don't know. I'd have to look at their offerings. I just haven't looked at that, uh, hard enough, yeah. but what we would do is we would theme parks though. So, you know, like, uh, we had an idea doing like the Mad Max type, uh, scenario where <laughs> it's themed for the adrenaline junkies. Right. Yep. And then we do, uh, an equestrian type style, resort where people can bring their horses we can do shows rodeos things like that so yeah the the sky's the limit out here and uh we're excited just to grow the brand right now we're focusing on just getting um jellystone zion ramped up and rocking and rolling we are sold out okay. for the fourth though july 4th we're sold out yeah it's wow. gonna be a big weekend so so scott tell, tell me uh one, one of my favorite questions to ask of any new construction is what did you screw up what did you learn along the way that said oh, i'm not going to do that again uh, boy well uh first off don't don't dig in rock um go find a nice <laughs> nice soil sandy area that would save us a lot of time and money um yeah, I, I consider like bringing in a couple more developers or partners to uh, take that all down. Um, my company, Nielsen Development, took the entire project down. That was uh, that was a challenge. 
um, because it was a massive project. I mean, we're building a small city here, you know, 300 yeah. and some odd sites with power, water, sewer, and, and high speed internet to every single site. So yeah, I think definitely I'd bring in some help on the development side. Yeah. Yeah. It, what, you know, did you, I, did you have any partners? Um, obviously you're here on the show. Did you have any other partners that helped you along in this process or was it just mainly you and your family? So as we speak, it is 100% me and my family, my okay. wife and my kids. Yeah. Okay. I have not brought on any partners. I've had a lot of people come out, want to help, yeah. uh, want to be a part of it. Sun Outdoors has reached out to us, uh, Tw Twin Crest Capital, uh, Blue Water Development. There's several. I could go on and on. They've come <laughs> to me. I haven't, go I haven't gone to them. So far, we haven't done anything with any of those partners. Great folks. Just haven't done anything with them yet. I think that kind of so makes you, see, you. I think that kind of makes you an oddity, and maybe Mike can correct me if I'm wrong. But I mean, a lot of the people we have come on have like either silent partners or they've done investment rounds, and you know they have quite a few other partners or investors. I guess so. Um, I think that's kind of interesting that it's just you tackling this. So. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, Ben. I, I you know, it's uh, it's been one heck of a challenge, I'll tell you yeah. that. But now we're, you know, we're uh, we're cranking. I mean, the revenue's coming in, things are things are happening, and it's a daily process. It's really cool. Yeah. So, is it always going to be new construction with you, or would you be uh, entertaining purchasing existing parks? I, I definitely would look at purchasing ex existing parks. Uh, what we would do is we we have all the the tools to go in and, you know, send the cameras down the laterals and the mains and checking out all the infrastructure underground, because that is super important. If it's not built right underground, it's going to be problematic for you in the future. So, um, but yeah, I mean, in some cases, existing parks could be purchased for less than what it would cost to develop. So for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I guess, uh, boy, I just lost my train of thought, so it's gone, whatever. I'm getting old, so boy, I've been saying that a lot lately. So, that just but makes me uh, angry. I guess when you look at the operational aspect, uh, now that the park's open, I guess what are some of the challenges you found just operating the park on a day-to-day -day basis that maybe you weren't anticipating when you opened it? I guess were there any well, surprises? Yeah. Um, processes, procedures, yeah. uh, standard operating procedures. And um, we're, we're constantly writing policy. Um, we're constantly having signage made up to instructions. And I, I mean, the list goes on and on. We didn't realize we had such a big park. So people were asking, well, where's the Wibbit at? And first off, what is a Wibbit? And so we started calling it, you know, the flotation, like a ninja flotation obstacle course, right? And we had to get signage to, to, you know, get people to go where, you know, they needed to go. And we had to print big maps and QR yep. codes and readers and, and train people on, hey, go on the Jellystone app because everything, that is so cool, that Jellystone app. But it's it just everything you need at your fingertips. Um, some of the other challenges were just working through the issues of the, like, cabins and um, they're all new, right? So anytime you get into a new RV or a new house, there's the little things you got to work out. So that, you know, that's been a challenge too, but uh, we're about 40 days into it um, uh, being open and things are running smoother and smoother every day. And the revenue so is getting better and better every day. <laughs> so <laughs> what's, uh, what's your staffing look like? Uh, right now we're, we're knocking on the door about 50 employees. Um, you know, a lot of those are lifeguards, uh, maintenance, ground maintenance, um, management, store management. We have a pretty nice size from what I'm being told. One of the biggest, um, uh, what do they call it? A ranger station, a uh, guest store. And yeah. so, and we're selling a lot of Yogi Bear merchandise and treats and sweets and things like that. Um, we chose not to take down the food and beverage in year one. So what we ended up doing was we got like the best food, food trucks, uh, in Southern Utah and they they come in and they're inside the water park. So you can get, uh, I think you guys call them elephant ears back there, but scones and honey butter. You can get <laughs> your, your like Indian Navajo tacos, which are super good burgers, fries, chicken strips, ice cream. I mean, everything under the sun, right, right there inside of the water park. Um, 
you mentioned some of the challenges. We are uh, trying to produce as much shade as we possibly can. And shade is expensive, you know. Um, yeah. It's to put up canopies and shade cells, very expensive to do. So um, we are renting our cabanas and our canopies. They're almost sold out every weekend. Yeah, I mean, where are you, yeah. where are you yeah. finding your staff from, uh, Scott? Are, are you getting work campers or is it mostly local? Uh, we have a few work campers and I'd like to invite, you know, um, any, anybody wanting to come out here, uh, just give us a jingle because there's there's probably room for you. Um, we need maintenance people. We need some people on staff like in the evening time to help out. Um, a lot of my workers, uh, believe it or not, are coming over from uh, my Nielsen RV days. They they loved working for me there. Um Okay. And for whatever reasons, they don't enjoy working for Camping World. And so they're coming over to my uh, my resort. And, of course, I can't recruit them. We got a non-compete for five years. But if they end up leaving and then coming to me, and then that's okay. So, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, it's just amazing. I, 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 we have to back up for a minute. I didn't know elephant ears were called anything else but elephant ears. So that, <laughs> we're learning something yeah. new. I didn't know yeah. that that was called something else. So, um, yeah. but, uh, anyways, uh, I mean, it's an amazing park and, uh, I'm, you know, the next time I'm out in Utah, I'll have to come in and visit the park. So it's, it's great. Um, Thanks, Scott, for coming on the show and for talking yes. to us about the, the new development. And hopefully uh, things continue to go well. And, of course, keep us in the loop on anything you guys are doing. So, Hey, right. thanks for having us. And let me know, Mike and Ben, when you're out, we'll take care of you. Yeah. Great. And, thanks, Scott. Yeah, thanks. And uh, if, uh, viewers who want to know more information about the park can go to ZionUtahJellystonePark.com and uh, it, look at all the the video and the cool pictures they have. So thanks again, Scott, and we will see everyone again next week. Thanks guys. Thank you for listening to WCM's park update, a production of Woodall's campground magazine. Join us for a new show each Tuesday at 3 PM Eastern on Facebook, YouTube, and wherever you listen to podcasts, follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn for daily news and updates and subscribe to our news feed on our website at woodallscm.com.